building you've seen for days. Sorry guys, I didn't start the recording right away and the game started right away. There wasn't a main menu. So we didn't really miss much. There was some coins being tossed on the table. We got a feather. This dude started reading this text. So yeah. Hello everybody. I'm Crazy Kale. Welcome to another first 30 minutes video. This time we are playing Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. I rolled a W. We're in the W's. So yeah, we're going to play the first 30 minutes of this video game and see what it's like. I think this one's going to be really, really heavy on the story side of things versus the actual like gameplay side of things. Um, just from what I saw of it in my library when it was installing. <laughs> uh, but again, I'm going into this pretty blind, so we will see how this goes. It didn't like me... So in case you missed it, the dude said, Night has fallen, and you're weary from travel. Stars fill the sky above, and in front of you is a brightly lit wooden house. The only building you've seen for days. Yes? Coyotes. Dogs. Game. Is this me? Yeah. Oh, this does not look good. You sit down and join the game. It's a cheap buy-in, and not many of the other players are very good. Okay. The lady fiddling with dice gets good cards, but has no real strategy. The man to your right seems to just hold on to the highest cards he has regardless of suit or any consideration of matches. Okay. The man in gray across from you, though, he's good. He already had the largest pile of coins when you bought in, and while your winnings grow quickly, you can't quite catch him. I don't have any other options one at this point. <laughs> one, the other players leave the table, sometimes with peak or with wry humor leaving their winnings with you or the man in gray. Is that a bottle cap? Someone playing with bottle caps? Hi, Ollie. One sec, I gotta move some stuff for the cat. Ollie. I can't move things if you're standing on them, you realize. Finally, <laughs> it's just you and the man in gray. He looks at you, full of humor, and winks. Last hand? Sure. He deals, you draw, and look at your hand. It's good. It's great. The best hand, in fact. A royal straight flush. Spades. Aces high. But okay. the man in gray pushes forward his whole pile. You're not sure exactly how much it is, but it's more than you've got. You can't match that. The man in gray stops you. Now, if you like, I'll let you wager your word. I know you'll be good for it. Just promise you'll pay the debt, however I ask. Ooh. So we have a really good hand, but he's very confident. Our word. However he asks. That could be bad. That's like some D&D &D level stuff where then some evil dude's like, kill all your party or something. Check cards. Yep. Ten, jack, queen, king, ace. All spades. Also, I don't even have an option. Okay. The man in gray smiles. Alright then. I'll call. It's gonna beat me. Blood. Yay. He stole our cards. That's not very nice. 
Dire Wolf, Chapter 1, Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. Well, your luck wasn't so good, was it? That's quite the hand, but not for the game we're playing. I'm afraid you owe me. Your life, sure. But more than that, your labor. Okay, I'm just gonna... I gotta turn it down a little. It's a very loud game. Hi, Sam. Okay. You see, this land is built on stories. It's one big story. This country, woven of many small ones. Few of the small ones are strictly true, and the big story is mostly a lie. I got two cats. Okay. All the stories and songs and myths and legends start somewhere with a seed. As they're told and retold and passed around, they grow and change to become the stories we know. Okay. To pay your debt to me, you'll be carrying stories, finding the seeds first and then spreading them, telling them onwards so they can begin gaining strength. This is no light task. Stories are heavy. Interesting. Most of the stories you'll find will be small seeds. They might be true, but they grow wild and unbelievable with the telling. Okay. The more important <laughs> stories are the true ones. The ones people will tell you about their own lives. Those often get lost in the weaves of the big story. The big story. The more true stories you can find and tell, the more you can weave that truth into the big story. Tarnish it a bit, perhaps, but isn't a dingy and battered truth better than a shining lie? Probably. No. I'm just gonna turn right. you tell that off. Story. I'll trade you some information about your task. Okay. Oh, hello. Death, change, endings, moving on. The tower. Travel, justice. Having desires fulfilled, wishes come true. Fortune, luck, fate. Tell the story of a black and gray city where every building is filled with desiccated corpses. Why not? Sounds lovely. Tell the story of a black and desiccated city. I'll or... strip away your flesh to make the journey easier, but still you will feel pain. Yay? Hunger, weariness, thirst, and despair. They're all part of stories, a part oh. not often told. Apparently I picked a very yes. gloomy story. But don't worry. As long as your task remains, you come back. Um, so sort of a northbound train blinking its giant eye as it crawls through the night. Travel? That's your job. Wander from place to place, gather those stories, and spread them. People get bored hearing the same stories over and over. But an old cliche in one state might be a rip roaring new yarn in another. Tell the story of an endless series of doors of different kinds, each leading only to more doors. Okay. You sometimes have to make choices about what kind of story you're finding. Is it a love story or a tragedy? Don't gather too many of one kind, though. This grand story needs variety. Tell the story of the parting of a cloud of fog to reveal a brief glimpse of a land of promise and plenty. Okay. Your deepest desires. Your greatest wish. Heaven. Big Rock Candy Mountain. El Dorado, the promised land, that place just over the ridge where they all say that the water tastes just like the sweetest wine. Well, I don't know where that is. It's supposed to be somewhere in this country, 
ask the people you meet. They're all searching for the same thing. All right, we got one last one. Tell the story of tossing a pair of bone dice on a blood river velvet table. They come up with snake eyes and wink at you. Okay. It's just luck. Funny how bad luck seems to follow the folks who already have problems aplenty. Well, try your luck out there in this country. See how the dice treat you. Okay. It's not all bad. You'll have to work hard. But I'll give you the gift for seeing the true shapes of people. Not many who can do that. Go on your way, seeker. Maybe we'll meet again, or maybe not. Either way, it'll be an experience for you. Thanks, because I definitely wasn't just, you know, I'm living my life up to this point. I hope <laughs> Yay. Oh, look, I'm a stickman skeleton. Ooh, oh, hello. Wonder if I should use. Okay, so I can use my controller for this. Wait, what am I? I'm collecting stories? <gasps> Canada! Canada! I wanna go to Canada! I can go home! Canada! Canada, take me home. Nope, I can't go to Canada. I'm banned. They don't allow skeletons in Canada. Lovely. Okay, well, this is... I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but I'm probably sure we're supposed to go to this first little house. So let's maybe do that. This bungalow is being ransacked. There's furniture piled in the front yard, ammunition heaped under the mailbox, and a crowd of clean cut men ripping apart a car in the driveway. The two heavily armed, mud caked women leaning over the porch railing share the same bored grin. One shouts at you. Lend a couple innocent gals a cigarette? You sure, why not? You smoke when those men draw pistols and shove you hard into the dirt. You know these girls? They demand. Once they've dumped your bag out into the road, I don't know them. they decide you're harmless. If you were selling booze too, you'd have a lot more cash. Sneers one. On the porch behind him, the two bootleggers are fingering their empty rifles, grinning in disappointment. Okay, can I climb this hill? No, I can't. Hopefully this music isn't copyrighted, because that would kind of destroy this, and then you guys would never get to see this recording. Goals to fill your obligation to the wolf by finding all 16 characters scattered over the U.S. and trade stories with them until you earn their trust and finish their story. Okay. Last group of types of stories. Remember what sort of adventure you had and you'll know what type of story you got. Okay. This way is walking. It's slow. You can speed up your walking by whistling, holding on the button that matches the notes on your spirits and speed up. Okay. Boxcar! Ooh! And hitchhiking. Okay, characters. Each time you meet a character, you'll have a night to talk with them and exchange stories. If you tell the kind of stories they want, they'll gain their trust and move forward through their tale. Okay. Okay, let's I guess go over here to this house. Hey Ollie. Off the road and into the woods, you can't help but come across this package by the old tree tied to a sturdy stick. The cloth wrapping conceals, though not particularly well. 
Something large and softly unsettled. Little eyes blink back at you from inside the bundle. Yeah, we'll say hello. A start. Please don't tell my pa that I'm in here. It says in a small voice. Pa doesn't want to live with us anymore. But I want to go with him. Don't tell him, please. I'm hiding. You tell the boy you'll keep his secret. You don't see his father anywhere. You don't see another soul from ours. Hey, the boy ran away from his father. We have a story. Bootleggers and boys running away from their fathers. Thrilling stuff. Oh, we're going to Portland. Never been to Portland. Mostly because I've never been to most of the states. New Hampshire. Maine. I wonder if there's anything. I don't see a bubble over at that farm. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. Every year, you know. The old man is sitting at the edge of a rotting old pier. Crooked legs dangling over the water. He watches a pair of seagulls preen groom each other on a rock just off the shore. Just when the fishing is going to be good. He taps great, black, thick gloves of spent tobacco out of a huge ceramic pipe. I got another year, I guess. Another year of this town being here, he replies, letting a grin spread across his face. If the seagulls came, that means enough fish to keep it in place. Okay. Yay. A woman walks the small town square with the horns of Betty Davis. A confident stride. An inimitable mannerism is elevating the sidewalk into a plush Hollywood carpet. And wrapped around her neck, a yellow velvet ribbon bright as an ocean sunrise. You question a well-dressed man parked outside an oyster house. Prudish woman, I took her on a fine date and she didn't remove so much as a ribbon. Excuse me, can you step back from the coop? That's the spirit. You decide to seek a second opinion. What's your opinion on? You, you talk with a waitress smoking outside a diner. Something funny about her. Just showed up one day. Doesn't work. Doesn't live anywhere as far as I know. Just around. Myself. I'd love to know who made all her beautiful clothes. Okay, I'm gonna ask around once Long more. Watches Steve go take up a crane. Oh, never mind. Hello, Ribbon. A woman's dead. Ghost dead. Buddies of mine, they've seen her all over the Atlantic for decades now. Okay. Oh no, hitchhiking. I don't actually know how to. Oh, hello. Oh. Apparently, I can hitchhike, but. It's not working. Oh, was there another... Did I miss one? I did. I missed one. I'm out of walking now and I'm not entirely sure how I did that. But we're walking. You can see storm clouds on the horizon. And you don't relish the thought of being caught wandering this rocky seaside road. Fortunately, you find the lighthouse door open with a daunting staircase before you. Okay. At the top of the only wrought iron spiral, you're breathless and feeling the strain on your knees. Rain already batters the walls outside. You can only knock on a heavy wooden door leading into the upper level. Muffled voices and light seep in beneath the door. Looks like we got a visitor. Sounds like a man's voice, deep 
the rug. Well, behave yourself. I'll open the door. Another man. This one with a higher, more sonorous voice. I always behave myself. He feigns indignation, but his tone betrays affection instead. After a moment, the door unlatches from the inside and opens. The man before him is tall and muscular, with a hint of a paunch beneath his wide chest. The heavy iron knob on the door looks nearly dainty in his huge hand. Didn't want to be out in this rain, did you? Come in. That's nice. Despite the rough exterior, this room looks like a well-appointed parlor. There's a rug on the well-trod wooden floor, and an enormously plush couch. And sat upon it is a stocky fellow grinning through a great hazel-colored beard. Tea? He offers, hoisting a teapot. Oh, we manage. The tall one sits on the sofa, casually wrapping an arm around the other white housekeeper. Ooh, we get to tell a story. He needs his quiet time. He's a writer. The tall one grunts. I doubt it. But you must have some good stories yes, on the road. You wake up the next morning on your old sofa, still warm from an excess of tea. And cakes? There might have been little cakes. Prodigious snoring rumbles in from the floor above you, and you quietly take your leave. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why I'm auto walking now. I don't know. Okay, so this button triggers the auto walk. I Alright, let's go see this. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing, but we're doing things. And a man on horseback pull up next to one another in front of the grocer. Suddenly, the driver and the rider, two wiry old men with identical haircuts, start shrieking at one another. The man with the truck leaps into the street. Brother! He shouts. Hi, Ollie. The one on the horse tumbles out of his saddle. Brother! He screams. They embrace in the road. Thirty years! Hollers the driver. The rider, tears streaming down over his face, corrects him. No! Thirty-two! Everyone here is watching these two older men cry and hug one another in the middle of Main Street. Cars and wagons are backing up. People are yelling. Take a photo of us! The driver begs you. Starts hauling a tripod out of the bed of his truck. The long lost brothers pose in front of traffic. <sighs> cry snot pouring out of their noses. As angry passerby wave you out of the road, each brother presses a coin into your Oh, we got paid. When the traffic That's good. Disperses, I don't know what I do with money, but I got money now. Paid you quite a shocking amount. Okay. Ooh, enter Boston. Oh, I guess maybe I could have entered Portland. Going into Boston. Okay, explore, earn money, train station, store. Apple cider, clam chowder, scrambled eggs, root beer. Okay. Earn money. Look for work. Digging holes. Okay, I can dig holes. 
Uh, digging holes, not what you had in mind, but damn, they're digging a lot of holes in this park. A foreman signs you a work group with a mix of other disheveled men and women and sends you off to dig a pit by the water fountain. Nobody wants to, oh, okay, so I asked someone, it's about nobody wants to say a young woman keeps mouthing something to you across the hole, but you can't make it out. What does she say? Dear Lobby, Dave Hobby, Dean Bobber, you never get anyone to admit what this is about, but you do get prayed pretty okay. All right. Uh, explore, I guess. Like no other you've been to. Crooked streets splay out of the maze of narrow passages. No two alike. Soon, you find yourself in twilight, utterly lost. Bright light crests around one corner. A car approaching. Uh, taxi's probably expensive, so I'm gonna keep Unable walking. To afford rescue, you keep walking. The asphalt turns to crooked cobblestones that threaten to wrench your ankle out of place. Was this always a moonless night? The stars multiply, each one looking like a pinprick through which light is exiting the terrestrial world. It's hard to find your way through in pitch darkness. You go by touch and sound, feeling the scale of the streets by the echoing of your footsteps, fingers tracing the rough surface of the buildings. And then, a rumble of noise in the distance. You quiet yourself, suddenly fearful. The clear sky tells you it's not thunder. But cannon fire. The city comes alive with fires and shouting. You find yourself trampled by a mob of men in thick brown coats, a phalanx of bayonets advancing up the street. Okay. When you come to, there's no sign of the commotion, the war, that you had just caught in. The comically shrill honk of a model N running up the road startles you, and you crawl toward the sidewalk. Above, the sky is a sharp, cold, cloudless blue. Interesting. Strange climber, yeah. Um... Okay, so this adds to different things. I can catch a ride. Ooh, okay, I'm not gonna do that just because. Can I? There we go. I'm not sure then if I should go back to there or not. I have no idea. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna go towards this. There's this thing here, and then there's Rhode Island, Connecticut. The edge of summer has turned the ocean choppy misanthropic, and the sky is miserably gray. The boardwalk prophetess lured you into her tent with a promise to read a fortune for free. Seems like business has slowed to a crawl already. Before you lie the instruments of a profession. There's tarot cards, Rider Waite, but also Marseille for traditionalists. Rosary beads and costume jewelry, and of course, the centerpiece, the great glass globe. Oh, what is my fortune today? She goes directly for the crystal ball, letting her eyes unfocus as though she can see a great distance into it. <laughs> she brings up names, mm. places, asks if you've known someone called John. If you have a relative in Newark. I don't even know where Newark is. You be a good sport. To what she says, and together you dance towards some insights about your romantic prospects. It's relieving to meet an honest charlatan instead of the ghouls and ghasts of the road. You might even say you're having fun. Until she abruptly stops Ooh. talking. Your eyes. 
she says, her voice suddenly drained of the bassy drama that was her stock and trade. You've met him. You've seen him, too. You carry him with you. The words that come out of your mouth are not your own. Ooh. You seem unwilling or unable to form properly out of a human throat. They're more like snarls, warning noises of a vicious animal. Ooh. The glass globe shatters. Your vision is hazy, and your body is not your own. You came far to get away from me, the voice lodged inside you says. But this one has a way of wandering. The fortune teller has collapsed. Cowering. Consider your debt to me repaid. I'm gonna black out now. <laughs> You're lying face down on the rough wood of the boardwalk. Sore weak. An empty patch of wood, cleaner than the surrounding planks, is all that remains of the fortune teller's tent. Interesting. Okay. Camp. Camp. I'm going on a camping trip. Quinn. Hey there, stranger. You're welcome to enjoy this fire with me. If you're respectful, that is. Cool. This here is my spot, and I ain't inclined to share it with any bad characters. You can call me Quinn. I like your dogs, Quinn. These here are my venturing companions. Kaz is the big one, and the one with the spots is Flip. I usually Kaz beat my way Flip. on the rails, but the road news said this town was fat, and the weather was fine. So I'm taking in the sights and seeing what I can drum up. I want a story that scares me. Now I'm older, almost nobody can do it. Give me your best shot. Okay. Here are the stories you've collected so far. They're organized by subject because the boss likes tarot cards. Okay. Uh, this is a subject can be stored here. If you tell the person a story about love, for example, they will tell you something from their own life relating to the subject of love. Poor things. As the night goes on, the icon will move from left to right. When it reaches the right side, the night is over, and so is your storytelling. The person you're talking to will usually tell you what the they'll be next, so you can find them again. Oh, Kidoke! Tell them type stories they request. They'll gain trust, and the eye will open. When it fully opens, the next time you meet them, they'll open up about their life. They'll remember this from a conversation to conversation, so don't feel you need to open the eye all the way the first time you meet someone. Dance around, get to know them. Okay, he wanted something scary. Family, future, love. Uh, that could be a good scary story. That's the stuff, stranger. Spooky. Spooky campfire tales are my favorite. Yay, we did it. Look. <laughs> Wit and some puppy dog eyes on occasion is all the luck I need out here. For everything else, I got my knife and my dog's got their teeth. I'm in the mood for something real funny like. Funny like, you say? Nope. Hmm, I don't really have any funny stories. I'll tell you that one, I guess. What's the use of telling sweet happy tales if in the make you snooze? Okay, that wasn't funny apparently. Not My funny. Family. There ain't no way I'm gonna start jaw flapping about those bastards. Judas's, the lot of them. Enough said. 
Hey, do you got any really thrilling stories to tell? I'm hankering for one of those. Oh, I can tell them the Boston one. That's not the one I wanted. <laughs> I don't get too much out of tales that are so cheerful. Not enough excitement for me. Sorry. What's my future look like? I ain't looking for a traveling companion, if that's what you mean. I do fine by myself, so just stick to mine in your own. You got any stories that are a little sad? Um. Sure, we'll go with that one. Is that sad? I don't usually like the sad ones, but that sure was beautiful. Okay, Thank apparently you. that was sad. I mean, open the eye. Traveling. I sure do love it. And I've seen some pretty things out there. I've seen serpent trains passing on a green and gold sea. I've seen mountains so tall and forests so thick, nobody will ever tame them. I once seen a bunch of townies skinny dipping in a river. That sure was something. I've seen terrible things too. Biblical floods and starving folks. Black blizzards full of dust. Hey, tell me a funny story. You seem like you still got a sense of humor. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. It's not really funny. I have to tell you that one. Is that funny? I don't know what's funny. I don't have any funny stories. I usually like the scary stuff, but your story needed more punch, I think. Well, I don't know a whole lot about the past, but they say there's an engine grave around these parts. Say it's haunted and full up with angry spirits. I used to love hearing stories of cowboys and engines fighting it up. Would swap tales with the youngins. But, well, I suppose if someone shot me, I'd be pretty vengeful too. Oh heck, the night's over already. I sure enjoyed talking to you, but I gotta get on. I think I'll see what's happening up the road this way. What? Okay. It's going that way. The tramping life suits me just fine. Every day is a venture. With things being so depressed, folks walk around like it's the end of everything good. But it ain't. Plenty nice things to see if you know where to look. Cool, we did it. Our first night. Hitchhike, hitchhike. No, I can't get the hitchhiking to work. Hello. So walk down the road, a black curl flutters down to land in your path. It looks at you, cocks its head, and speaks. Well, you've got a long, long road ahead, don't you? All these people to chase down, or so I hear. It laughs. I got some experience when it comes to chasing folks. Well, if you want, you could go find your friend again. Ask him more about their life. They might want better stories this time, though. Peers up at you. Didn't they tell you where they were heading next? But hey, the world's full of people. Bet you could find another friend like that if you went around looking around. There's more than one interesting person in the land, for sure. Gives a gravely laugh. A gravely laugh. That's what humans say, anyways. And with that, it launches into the air and disappears. Alright, we're in... Hold left button. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna go this way. The main problem is I don't actually know the geography of the states because I don't live in the states, so I'm just gonna be here wandering, doing more wandering. Right to New York, apparently. We wait in the soup line for over an hour. It's barely crawling along. We round the corner of the building and see far away a lone pair of nurses struggling to ladle out soup to hundreds. Can I be waiting here a while longer? Sighs the mother in line beside you. You and her get talking. After a while, the topic drifts into a strange place. She starts telling about the two brothers who wandered seeking one another for 50 years. You recognize this story about the two brothers who were reconnecting after 30 years apart, but way more outrageous than your version. I know that story. You tell her your version. 
It's not as exciting, she says diplomatically. I mean, it sure sounds realer than what I heard, but I think Toby likes mine best. She bounces her child encouragingly on her hip, but Toby's too hungry to smile. Interesting. Ooh. His clothes are expensive, but unkempt. A tailored jacket stretched and warped out of its best fit by long days on the road. His thinning frame weighs down the boxcar next to yours. You got a light, friend. You offer a match, which bends and nearly snaps as he scratches it against the pitted iron edge of the boxcar. Thanks, he mumbles, perching one last cigarette on his lip. Don't rightly know where I'm going. You notice how deeply wrinkled his clothes are. It's as though a huge hand plucked him from a high society party and crumpled him up like a sheet of paper. Don't rightly know how I got going either. They built a railway just past Missy Hudson's estate. Damned bracket ruined our soiree. Might have been a few bottles of Armagnac too many when I walked down the tracks to tell them to keep it quiet. He drags on the cigarette. But you never see him exhale. Okay. Let's go into New York. I always wanted to go to New York. Uh, let's do this again. Let's look for work. It starts to rain in the kind of torrential, tree-stripping way that only happens once or twice a year. Everyone scrambles for cover, but one guy stays out in the street. A fellow with a bale of bent and lopsided umbrellas. Ten cents each, he hollers. What an opportunist. The rain has soaked him through, but he's doing a roaring trade. Hey, he tells you. Go run around the main shopping streets and pick up all the umbrellas you see, okay? People sometimes drop them when they blow inside. Out. I'll pay. Ah, he's right. There are umbrellas scattered up and down the streets like fallen birds. You gather up an armful of umbrella sellers, buys them off of you for a couple coins. Next morning, though, your throat is hoarse and your nose is running like a faucet. Damn it. Alright. I wonder what there's in the store here. Bagels. Pizza. Scrambled eggs. Ice cream float. Ooh. Interesting. Let's do some exploring. The belch black smoke as the ferry churns gray water into froth. A broad-shouldered figure leans out over the rail, eyeing the skyscrapers on the horizon. Nearby, a man and a woman speak in low, urgent voices. He takes her wrist gently. She is weeping softly. To a traveling story or a love story? Hmm. The man gives you a once over as you approach. His newsboy cap is ragged with age. You look familiar. Did I meet you at Union Square? The demonstration. It got bloody, but I'm used to that after Italy. He claps a hand in his hat to steady it from the breeze. When Gramsci was arrested, many of us had to flee. I came into New York, and here I continue our efforts. The workers' voices will be heard. Cool. All right, be explored. Saw New York. What? What? I'm half-hearted. Oh, can I? I can fix that. Maybe. Hey, little pizza. Pizza. There we go. Oh. Authentic New York pizza. As good as they say. You're covered in grease. All right. I had some pizza. Okay. The crow is there. I don't want to talk to the crow. Why would I want to talk to the crow? Let's keep going. Oh, there's a camp over by Philly. Okay, we'll grab this story. And I think we'll hit one more camp and then that will be it for time. I've already gone over time, but it took a little while to the get going. Was a 
clear, reflective shade of blue. Unusual in this region, where bog iron colors the river's brown. Across the way, a goat with great leather wings laps up the water, its sunken red eyes fixed on your every movement. Yeah. You now notice the unnatural absence of wildlife. No fish swim in the stream. No birds sing in the trees. The winged goat drinks with a forked tongue, only abstractly concerned with your presence. Let's go, poke a goat! Hill, a scorched one room house lies abandoned, two of its four walls in ruins. The goat rears up, front hooves curled, and stretches its wings. What if I can die in this game? Breath. Who knows? The goat opens its mouth and wails. A protracted, shrill sound, indistinguishable from the cry of a human infant. It only begins to stop when you take several steps back. Lovely. The winged goat doesn't follow. Instead, it lies down inside the burnt house, surrounded by portraits of a large family. Glass frames stained brown from smoke. Yay! La 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 la. Okay, right, they were gonna do one more camp. I don't know if this is our friend. Uh, let me look. I don't know that didn't actually tell me anything. Yeah, there we go. Number two, I will get by. Okay, map. Okay, so he is the one that's right by us here. So we'll do the second night with him and then that will be it. Quinn. Stranger, it's good to see you again. You know, I'm gonna see this whole world one day. But for now, I just got my sights set on seeing all 48 of the great U.S. I already seen 10 whole states. That's better than my folks ever done, that's for sure. Plenty of townies and even some tramps treat me like I'm kid simple. But I ain't helpless, and I only act it when I ain't got no better choice. Like if I get pinched. I do right fine on my own. Don't need nobody but Cass and Flip. Hey, tell me a funny story. You seem like you still got a sense of humor. E, did I pick up any funny stories? Okay, we already did that one. They already know that one. That could be a funny story. <laughs> that was a chuckle to be sure. There you go. You liked it. Being trapped, caged. You think beggardom is a prison? No, stranger. Beggardom is freedom. Responsibility is the real trap. Wound tied like an old spring. Pride and pretending will bleed folk dry. And then when there ain't nothing left to be proud of, when they can't pretend no more, they'll unwind. Hey. Do you got any really thrilling stories to tell? I'm hankering for one of those. Ah, uh, I got my goat story. Do you want my goat story? I don't know if that's thrilling. I could do that. Is that thrilling? Bootlegging? Well, that was a lively tale. Okay. <laughs> Authority. The coppers and rail yard dicks don't ruffle me none. I just tell them my poor ma and my poor pa died of the pneumonia. I give them crocodile tears about trying to get over to my grand just down the way. All I got's left is my dogs, mister. 
works damn near every time. I want to hear a story about ghosts or murderers or something. Scary stuff. Okay. Mm, nope. Nope. I probably have to go with the goat. Winged goat. They're scary. Oh, that's the stuff, stranger. Spooky campfire tales are my favorite. Doing good. Mm, sadness. Ain't seen no sight sadder than in the city. In the city, they want you to feel like a giant among giants. Like you can do anything. But I seen them shanty camps full up with folks who got nothing to eat or do. Cities serve to make the small feel smaller. Hey, tell me one of those exciting stories. Exciting? What makes me have exciting stories? I can tell them that one. New York. I went to New York. Is that exciting? Don't get too much out of tales that are so cheerful. Oh, no, no. That's too exciting cheerful. It wasn't exciting. Freedom. Well, that's what them trains have come to mean to me. Freedom. Crossing a country wider than imagination. I'm in the mood for something real funny like. Oh, why do you have to go with funny? I don't have. Is that funny? What's the use in telling sweet, happy tales if in the make you love I story? Didn't like that one. Well, some of the songs say love is like being sick in your heart. Don't sound too pleasant to me. I love my dogs, but it don't feel like being sick. Being sick in your heart sounds more like getting Judas. Something I know a thing or two about. Well, sun's coming up, so I've got to get ready to go. Thanks for the tales, friend. Where you heading next? Decided yet? Maybe our paths will cross. I'm going up the road this way myself. Hope cool. I'll see something fun. I generally do, you know. There's interesting things to see everywhere if you keep your eyes open. Alright. So that one didn't go as well, but it went okay. Alright, well, I'm going to end this here. This has been a weird game. Um, I guess you just wander around and keep talking to people. The graphic style is a little bit confusing. Because, like, some of these things have quite a lot of detail, and then others have no detail, and the texturing's kind of weird. I'm not entirely sure what they were going for graphics wise. Um, yeah. It's an interesting concept, though, get wandering around, gathering stories, gaining people's trust. It would also be interesting if I actually knew, like, where in the states I am. I know I'm on the east coast, because New York's on the east coast. But other than that, I don't know. Um, yeah. So it's, it's an interesting concept for a game. Um... It's a little bit weird that it just kind of starts. Like, when I loaded up the game, that's why you guys missed the first little bit, is it just went. <laughs> I don't know if I accidentally hit something, but there was no, like, menu. I'm just gonna do that. Um, so it's not quite yelling in my ears as loud. Um, yeah, so it just kind of started and threw you right into it. Uh, yeah. It was a little bit slow to get off, and... I feel like you'd spend a lot of time, because like, I was almost out of stories, so you really would have to, once you get more characters, really, I think, spend a lot of time wandering around just collecting stuff. I couldn't figure out how the hitchhiking thing worked, I think I'd have to look in the controls and stuff. Um, but yeah. Interesting concept for a game, if you wanted to do something adventure-y, or like, instead of reading a book or something, it's like an interactive choose-your-own-adventure kind of story sort of a thing, um, which is cool. It would also be an interesting one to play on stream because you could get like your viewers to choose for you and be like, which way do you want me to go in this story? Which kind of a story do you want it to turn into? Where do you want me to go? So yeah, that could be a, an interesting use for it. But for now, that is going to be it. So this has been Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. I have no idea how it ends. If you want to discover that for yourself, there'll be a link in the description below to the dev site of it. And you can check it out. And as always, we will see you in the next one. Goodbye!